In my last video, I introduced you to my VW Caddy, which I've owned for a little while now, but has degraded into a bit of a sorry state. And in this video, we're going to start sorting it out. So there's two main things stopping me driving this van at the moment. The first one is we've got some oil in the coolant, which you guys have been helping out with in the comments on the last video. And I think I know what it is now, but we're going to come back to that in the next video. So the main area I'm going to be concentrating on the start of this video is the inside because as I mentioned before it absolutely stinks in here and is to the point now where I think it's ingrained in the van. Like I said last time I've been using this van for mobile valeting for years now and there's been chemicals spilled in there and water and everything like that and over time I think all of this plywood has essentially started to absorb the smell and it's become a part of the van so this all needs to go along with all the rubbish in here and the rubbish in the front and then we've got some modifications to do on the van too. There is no point wasting any more time. Let's try and turn this caddy into a much more usable van. Let's go. This is where work starts on my old VW caddy van and it is about time. It received a bit of love and a bit of a makeover so that is exactly what we're going to be doing. So the first thing to do is clear out all the rubbish from the back and the front of the van and then start stripping down all of the back of the van too. This is a bit of a sad moment for me, this really, because I remember building these shelves with my mate Joe, and they're not best, but you know, they did the job and they've done it for years, so <laughs> it's surprising how well they lasted, really. But anyway, the whole thing's being revamped, these have got to go. Before we can start taking all of the ply lining out, these shelves that we built a long time ago have got to come out first, and I'm surprised they've lasted as long as they had because they were pretty much just bodged together. So the fact that these have stayed up and managed to do their job the whole time without failing once has amazed me. I'm still not 100% sure what I want to do with this van yet, there was quite a lot of mixed opinions in the comments section, but one thing's for sure, the back of it definitely needs to be stripped, and it definitely needs some work back here before I can even think about driving it. That's all of the shelves now removed and chucked firmly in the bin. There's one last piece to take off which we use to hold the latex gloves that we're using when valeting. And once that's gone, we can start looking at the ply lining. There's most of the crap pulled out of the van. Next thing is the ply line to come off. But I know already this is going to be really easy because, well, to be honest with you, I put it back in and yeah, it looks like it's hardly attached. So this should be a two minute job. Then we can do the floor, which is the one I'm most excited about because I feel like that's what's stinking the worst. And also I think it's going to be hiding a few nasty bits as well. So yeah, let's get it done. Right, that was held in with one screw. I must have been super lazy when I put this back in because that is ridiculous. How has it even stayed up? Mental, anyway. Yeah, I have no idea how that managed to support four or five litre bottles and also some bo other bottles as well. It just doesn't make sense how one screw could have done all of that, but it managed to stay up there and stay up there for years. So anyway, that's all of the ply lining now out and we can turn our attention onto the floor. And I think we can see now why it smells. All of that white stuff is a buildup of, I think, moisture wow. and the chemicals that I described previously, and it does not smell good. As soon as I yeah. moved this, the smell got 10 times worse. Oh, that's grim. That's so grim. The wood layer is just the start of this. There's like a membrane underneath, which looks disgusting. And then another one underneath that, and then loads of grime underneath that. This is honestly, I don't, how did I put up with it like this? I've got no idea. Next up was to peel back these rubber parts, the kind of the sound deadening for the floor, I think it is. So once these were off, it really revealed how bad the buildup of dirt was. As I said, I've not touched the floor in this van since I got it, and I don't know when it was originally put down. So this could have been here for 10 years or more. As disgusting as it was, I can't lie and tell you that it wasn't satisfying because it definitely was. It feels like you're taking years off this van by refreshing these parts. 
Along with all of the sound deadening on the floor, I wanted to take off anything else which could have absorbed that smell. So all of the foam was coming off the walls from where it was behind the ply lining and just any other parts in the back of the van that I could remove. I'm glad you guys can't smell this, but but it is, it's grim. It's the only way to describe it, it's grim. If you've ever been in an abandoned building, it smells like that. It's got that damp, musty, horrible, turn your stomach sort of smell. It is rough. I am so glad I'm doing this now. I don't, I don't have a clue how I've put up with it for this long, but now I'm peeling it all back, it's making it 10 times worse as well. But it's got to get worse before it gets better, and I think I've just got to brave it. Next up was to try and clean the back of the van out because the wooden parts were just the start of it. There was a kind of thick layer of mud around all of the edges where that ply lining didn't cover and it had gone rock solid. So I had to use this trim tool to try and break it and then hoover it up and then we could start looking at cleaning it properly. I couldn't tell you if this is from me or from when the van belonged to Stanner Stairlifts, but there was all sorts of stuff kind of caked into these edges. The next job is to give that floor a proper scrub. So I sprayed it down with a citrus degreaser and then grabbed a brush, which I'd normally use for wheel arches, but it's just a stiff bristled handled brush and just went over the whole thing, which actually lifted a lot of the dirt off really, really well. So the back of the van already is looking 10 times better, but I can't tell if it's smelling any better yet. Hopefully it is, but this one's a question for you guys really. What am I supposed to do with the floor from this point? Because there's a few spots where there's some rust showing through. Well, there's quite a lot to be honest with you. So am I supposed to just leave this because it will probably be fine? Or do I repair the rust uh, from the top and repaint it? Or you know, what paint do I use? Can you let me know down below what I'm supposed to do with this and you know, what's the right way of doing it? But yeah, it's definitely looking a lot fresher in here already. And also some of the dirt, it's like mud basically caked into all the corners and underneath all the trim. So I think I'm gonna have to take off this trim at some point, that trim over there, and also the bulkhead out to actually properly clean this. But what we do from there is gonna have to wait for another video. But for now, we've got some modifications to do to the van. And I know what you're thinking already. Chris, your van's broken, the engine is not working correctly, it's got oil in the coolant. Why are you gonna bother starting to modify it? And to be honest with you, I'm not right now. We're gonna go back in time. I filmed this a little while ago knowing that I was going to put the van on the channel and knowing that I was going to use this footage so we've got something off an Audi S3 to fit to the caddy so it's definitely an upgrade. So one of the first things I want to do on the van is actually these front brakes. I've not changed these pads for about three years so they're probably due but this lines up quite nicely with something else. Matt has recently changed Liam's brakes for Lamborghini ones and that means that his S3 brakes were knocking around the unit and I'm hoping they're going to fit directly onto my caddy. I've done a little bit of research online and I can't find a conclusive answer so I suppose the only way to find out is take the wheel off, whip the old caliper off and see if it's just going to bolt up. So now I've got the wheel off, you can see kind of why I want to change it. The calipers are 200,000 miles old. The passenger side likes to stick ever so slightly every now and again when the van's not driven for a while. And even though I painted these pretty much when I got the van, they've got full-time acne now and they're looking like they need to go. The first thing to do for this was remove the caliper from the carrier and then I could remove the carrier from the hub. Because these S3 brakes are a different style of caliper, they don't come with a carrier, so they should bolt directly to the hub if they're gonna fit. After popping off the retaining pin, the caliper was then free from the carrier and we could remove that and the brake pads. Then it was time to unbolt the carrier itself from the hub, which I either did overly tight or it's been in there too long and started to seize in, but after just using a breaker bar, I managed to break that off and remove that from the hub. Right, so I've got the caliper off and the hub exposed. So now I'm gonna see if the S3 caliper will just bolt straight on. And I'm hoping it will, because one of the great things with VAG vehicles, that's like um, VWs, Audis, say it's Skodas, all that sort of thing, is there's so many interchangeable parts. Making upgrades like this, on some occasions, super easy. So fingers crossed, it's gonna work. 
These parts are so interchangeable, even Lamborghini are a VAG product, which means then that Liam and Matt managed to fit Lamborghini brakes on his S3, making these calipers available for my van. And thank God these calipers do fit. The bolts go perfectly in from the hub into the caliper itself, so I could then fit the disc and then run off to the part shop and get some new pads for those calipers. With those copper grease and then clipped into place, we could bolt that over the top of the disc and straight into that hub like we did previously. I'd say this couldn't get much easier. It's literally just two bolts to fit that caliper. And here's a quick comparison for you for the old disc over the top of the new S3 disc is definitely a much larger and thicker disc, meaning it should work better. Now, finally on the home run, all I had to do was unbolt the brake line which came on the S3 caliper, remove the original brake line from the old caliper and bolt that into the S3 one. Again, it's a straight fit. You don't have to take the brake line off or anything like that. It bolts from the old caliper into the new one. And there we have it, Audi S3 brakes installed on a VW Caddy van. I'm sure loads of you are going to say this is a really common upgrade, I just couldn't find a definitive answer online, so the easiest way to test it is just give it a shot myself. The final thing to do before I can drive the van is just bleed the brakes a little bit. They didn't need much because we used the original lines and the van was good to go. So now the brakes are on and they are working so much better. Honestly, I could not recommend doing that enough because hopping from the BMW, which has got really nice six pot brakes and the Aston Martin, which has obviously got good brakes too, into the van, the van's brakes felt awful. So doing this upgrade gives you bigger brake discs, more stopping power, and they just work better. And as a bolt on mod, it couldn't be any easier. And also as well, I have been gifted this Audi TT steering wheel. So it's like a flat bottom full leather steering wheel to replace the plastic one that comes in the van. And we can all agree, it looks okay, but it's a little bit naff it's got like leather look plastic and it's got no uh, controls on the steering wheel or anything like that and i think it could be better but yeah do i fit this tt steering wheel or do i go for something different i'm 99 percent sure this will fit because everything audi seems to fit on vws and the other thing i think that might bother me with this is having an audi airbag i'd rather have a vw one because it just makes a bit more sense but yeah if there is a better option or is it a VW airbag that can go in this steering wheel, please let me know. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the van content. It feels like a bit of a breath of fresh air to me and it feels really nice to be pulling something that I've owned for so long out of the mud and making it that little bit better. But yeah, if you are enjoying it, please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next time.